Last December, Mr. Beast uploaded this video, a YouTube short where he tasked a random college student to be the best postmate ever and run all the way to Paris to bring him back a baguette. 406 million views later, I'm here to tell you that video was illegal. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that's always down to break bread with Mr. Beast. That's right, good old Jimmy D is back. Not the sausage guy Jimmy Dean, the dough guy Jimmy Donaldson. And by dough, I mean money. This man is the living embodiment of extravagance. Whether it's eating $1,000 golden cookies, $10,000 golden steaks, $70,000 golden pizzas, or $100,000 golden ice cream, the Mr. Beast motto is literally nothing in moderation. If it's not coated in gold, then it's the world's largest pizza slice. And if it's time to cut back, well then, he's just gonna skip every single meal for a month straight. An unexpectedly dangerous stunt that we've actually covered previously on the channel. But sometimes Jimmy is a simple man with simple taste. Sometimes he just wants a loaf of bread, delivered straight to his door directly from Paris. So how do you do that, you might ask? Well, you just wander around a college campus offering increasingly large amounts of money to anyone who walks past. Unsurprisingly, finding a willing participant didn't take him too long. If I give you $300, would you fly to Paris and bring me back a baguette? By the way, shout out to Duke University's campus for that one. I'd recognize that old stone archway in the background anywhere. Gotta admit, I am a bit bitter that no one ever did anything that exciting or profitable while I was a student there. The best I could do was just selling my body to science labs for like 20 bucks an hour. And all I gotta show for it is a third arm and some glow-in-the-dark skin. Anyway, what follows this simple request is a delightful YouTube short where our intrepid adventurer catches a flight, grabs a dozen baguettes, and before heading back to the airport, takes takes a detour to the world-famous Louvre Museum to see the Mona Lisa, then catches an evening under the stars at his hotel with a beautiful view of the Eiffel Tower in the background all lit up. Add in the costs of the plane ticket and travel accommodations for both the delivery boy and the camera operator and whoo hoo boy! Two round-trip tickets to Paris, $2,000. Overnight hotel, $200. A dozen fresh baguettes, $10. Paying a random college student to fly to Paris just for a viral YouTube video? priceless. In total, that single carbo load probably cost a Jimmy Beast about 4,000 bucks. It also probably earned him nothing because YouTube Shorts didn't monetize yet. But hey, 406 million views and counting off a single video ain't too shabby, right? Here's the thing though, not only is this the world's most expensive Uber Eats delivery, it's also illegal. No joke, this minute-long YouTube Short breaks the law. That is 100% fact, by the way, not clickbait. How? Well, that, my friends, is the question that I aim to answer today. And the best place to begin is by talking about customs. You see, the law can start to get pretty sticky when it comes to transporting food across international boundaries. Case in point, in August of 2022, a man was fined 1,288 US dollars after he failed to declare two egg and sausage McMuffins and a ham croissant when entering Australia. According to Australia's Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Forestry, quote, this will be the most expensive maca's meal this passenger ever has. I have no sympathy for people who choose to disobey Australia's strict biosecurity measures. Gotta admit, I don't know what scares me more. This guy's cold-hearted attitude or the fact that in Australia it's common practice to refer to Mickey D's as macas. And this isn't just a one-off thing either. Seems like no one is safe from Australia's biosecurity measures. This is the same country that bullied Johnny Depp and Amber Heard into recording a now infamous apology video where they expressed full contrition for taking their two Yorkshire Terriers across the border. I'm truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Why though? What's the big deal here? Well, as an isolated continent, Australia has an ecosystem that isn't equipped to deal with many of the invasive species and pests that might get into the country if they're not super strict about what food and animals enter. And while clamping down on someone trying to smuggle McDonald's across the border by slapping them with thousand plus dollar fines might seem draconian, these policies do have a reason for existing. Just take it from Amber. Australia is free of many pests and diseases that are commonplace around the world. That is why Australia has to have such strong biosecurity laws. Well, it might be extreme uncomfortable to see these two read and talking points written by their kidnappers. <laughs> I mean, the fine people at the Ministry for Agriculture, Fisheries, and Forestry, Australia does have valid reason for these strict biosecurity concerns. That said, Australia is stricter than most countries. So, if an Egg McMuffin or a Tiny Terrier is enough to set off alarm bells for international travelers, should Mr. Beast be worried about his baguette business being banned at the border of the U.S.? Well, one thing that he has going for him, at least, is that he lives in the United States, which is, uh, well, let's just say most countries aren't as strict as Australia. And Australians are just as unique, both warm 
and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. So, do those fresh-baked French loaves have legal permission to enter the country? Even if US restrictions are lighter, and generally just result in your forbidden food being flung into the trash, the United States does place restrictions on what food items can enter the country, and those restrictions are laid out in great detail on the US Customs and Border Control website. So, is Mr. Beast's basic baguette making it through customs? Well, reading through the 6,700 word list of prohibited and restricted items, we find that their main concern is actually about meat products. Quote, Bush meat made from African wildlife and almost anything containing meat products, such as bullion, soup mixes, etc., is not admissible. The rationale for this is that meat products are often one of the biggest sources of foodborne pathogens, including nasty little parasites that, after they've wormed their way through your digestive system, they can then worm their way into the water supply. As for restrictions on plant-based items, the US regulations explicitly mention that, quote, some plants, cuttings, and seeds that are capable of propagation are only allowed with proper import permits and other documents. In addition, every single plant or plant product, including handicraft items made with straw, must be declared to the CBP officer and must be presented to CBP inspection, no matter how free of pests it appears to be. Again, this makes a lot of sense. You don't want new invasive species of seeds or pests coming in and throwing off the ecosystem of your country. That said, when it comes to prepared food items, like say, a baked baguette, they're very explicit about one thing that is allowed. Quote, you may bring bakery items and certain cheeses into the United States. Bingo for Mr. Beast's baguette bag. That part of the video is completely by the book. So if customs isn't the problem here, could it possibly be that moment alongside the Mona? I mean, this courageous cuisine carrier really leans into the whole baguette boy thing, apparently not letting those loaves leave his sight even when he's in the Louvre. Like, can you really get this close to the Mona Lisa carrying an open bag full of food? Yeah, actually, surprisingly, yes you can. The Louvre allows you to bring food into the museum. Sure, you're not allowed to start chowing down in front of the exhibits, there is a no eating policy, but you're apparently allowed to bring in outside food and just carry it around with you. They're not particularly worried about the steam from your freshly baked loaves damaging any artwork. Or maybe these loaves are hard and not steamy at all by the time they got there, because just look at these things. They are out, they're exposed to air, they're getting drier with every passing second. Fresh baked baguettes like these will usually stay fresh for like two to three days, but that's only if you're really putting them in a bread box or somewhere where it's gonna contain them, keep them fresh and away from the air. In other words, Baguette Boy's strategy here of buying bread at the start of the day, then spending an entire afternoon sightseeing with the bread in tow before flying back the next day to deliver said bread after it spent more than a day marinating in the open air, it's not gonna deliver the freshest results. No wonder Jimmy dropped the rest of the bag after tasting one. I honestly just needed one. But hey, while taking your unsealed paper bag full of baguettes into the Louvre isn't exactly the greatest bread preservation strategy, it sure does make for a good video. This guy clearly understood the assignment, because when Mr. Beast sends you on an errand, you're doing it for the content. So hold on, this is a minute long video. What else could there possibly be that's illegal inside of this thing? We've covered it all, haven't we? Maybe it's uh, paying college students for a random task, or putting bread in an overhead bin. Nope, none of the above. It actually all comes down to this scene right here. Three seconds of footage out of his hotel room balcony. Allow me to explain. You see, France is one of the few European Union member nations that does not allow for freedom of panorama, which means that photography and video of any public architecture is a copyright violation. The Eiffel Tower by day is old enough that the copyright's expired, and now it's in the public domain. But the Eiffel Tower's night lights were installed in 1985, and because they're so recent, they're actually protected by copyright. As the Société d'Exploitation de la Tour Eiffel, the company that owns and operates the tower, explained on the tower's website, quote, Photographing the Eiffel Tower at night is not illegal at all. Any individual can take photos and share them on social networks, but the situation is different for professionals. The Eiffel Tower's lighting and sparkling lights are protected by copyright, so professional use of images of the Eiffel Tower at night requires prior authorization and may be subject to a fee. Looks like the City of Lights is very protective of those lights. In short, but uh, not quite as short as a YouTube short, this this video about international bread distribution is illegal not because of the food content, but because of the copyrighted content. It's a violation of French copyright law. By taking a video of something that tens of thousands of tourists photograph and record every night, Jimmy Beast has now made himself an international criminal. How stupid is that? But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And hey, speaking of Mr. Beast, remember that time that he made Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory into a real thing? Well, I ran the numbers and you You'd be surprised by how realistically effective a chocolate waterfall can be. That video is over on the left. Or if you want to find out just how dangerous his challenge of going no food for a month was, that video is on the right. Do not try that one at home. I 
beg you. And as always, my friends, I'll see you next week.